Chapter 3 of Lost Explorers and Ancient Mysteries The Lost Frontier Our journey now moves to the vast areas of rainforest nestled in the northern reaches of South America. The jungles of the Andes are an environment that can be likened to nowhere else on Earth and high in the jagged mountains in areas such as the Mato Grosso region of Brazil Figure 59A. The jungle is some of the most dense and unforgiving in the world. Fig. 59B. The great explorer Percy Fawcett had called the area the roof of the world and he was right. High in the heavily wooded mountains, even still, there are no towns, roads or known inhabitations of any kind as far as can be seen, just a continuous undulating blanket of dense green jungle, broken occasionally by jagged mountain peaks crumbling skyward and snaking rivers that teem with piranha and huge crocodilian. The thick jungle in between them is populated by countless species of insect enormous spiders, monkeys and other more terrifying predators. Black panthers and giant anacondas, the largest and most feared snakes in the world. It is a place where the moist forest air itself is alive with all manner of hidden and still yet unknown compounds. Primitive tribes still live in these remote areas and it's possible that some areas may yet be inhabited by other tribes that are even still unknown. When the intrepid Fawcett had gone missing in the area in 1925, every major metropolitan newspaper in the entire world had announced the disappearance of the expedition organized by Colonel Percy Harrison Fawcett in the mysterious region of Mato Grosso, in the heart of Brazil in search of the lost city. Colonel Fawcett was certainly not the first to venture into the wilds of the South American jungles, nor the last. He is however, if not one of the most famous, undoubtedly the most daring and his story is almost certainly one of the most intriguing. The diaries of Percy Fawcett have inspired many a Hollywood movie pertaining to lost worlds and mysterious jungle treasures. Fawcett's tale Colonel Percy Fawcett figure 60 had been a retired official of the British Army, a veteran fighter of the Boer Wars in India during the late 1800s, an explorer of outstanding reputation and considered by his peers to be an expert bushman in any class of forests or other rugged terrains. In 1906 he was requested by the British government to survey the borders between the countries of Bolivia and Brazil. At the time both the Brazilian and Bolivian governments had wanted their borders properly defined once and for all in order to quell the constantly erupting border disputes they were experiencing disputes they were afraid would soon lead to open war between their two countries. Of course, and in true political fashion, neither country had trusted the other to do the job fairly so eventually both countries agreed that only a neutral party could suffice for the task. The Royal Geographic Society of Britain had then recommended Fawcett for the job. Fawcett had agreed and traveling by canoe and foot over roughly an 18-month period in 1906-07. He surveyed and mapped the borders of the two countries using a compass and a sexton, the staggering feat given the conditions he faced and the terrain he covered. During the four-year period from 1908 to 1912 he had then continued further, also successfully surveying the boundary of Paraguay and the border between Peru and Brazil. Then Fawcett's mind began to turn toward the undertaking of various explorations in the region. Finally, when embarking upon a new expedition from a place deep in the Brazilian jungle that he had named Dead Horse Camp he wrote his last letter to his wife on May 29, 1925. In the letter he said this to her. Our route will be from Dead Horse Camp, 11 degrees 43 south and 54 degrees 35 west, where my horse died in 1921, roughly northeast to the Xingu, visiting on the way an ancient stone tower which is a terror of the surrounding Indians as at night it is lighted from door and windows. If we do not return, I desire not that you organize any rescue game. It is too dangerous. For if I, with all my experience, fail, then not much hope is left in the triumph of others and I would not encourage such an attempt. That is one of the reasons of why I do not say exactly where we go. One thing is doubtless. The answer to this enigma and perhaps to the prehistoric world,
it will be found when these old cities have been located and are open to scientific research. Because the cities exist. Of that I am certain. You need have no fear of failure. And those were the last words that anyone ever heard from him. Fawcett entrusted the letter to one of three assistants who had helped the expedition thus far having told them that he no longer required their services. He had commented that a smaller group would look less like an invasion to the Indians and therefore be less likely to be attacked, an attitude that had in fact, always been his policy. He said to his assistants that the route was carefully planned. He then disappeared into the jungle, taking with him, his eldest son Jack and another man, who was a close friend of Jack's. None of them were ever seen or heard of again. Fawcett had been 58 years old at the time. Despite his wishes, several rescue missions were actually undertaken in an effort to discover what had become of Fawcett, some fraught with disaster and all without success. There were also several reported sightings by various persons of a man matching Fawcett's description, though none of these reports were ever confirmed. Rumors still abound concerning his disappearance. Some have said they saw him living with a native tribe attending his son who had become too ill to travel. Some claimed to have seen him wandering lost and crazed in the jungle, still searching. One claimed that he had been captured by headhunters and that he had even seen a shrunken head resembling Fawcett. It has even been speculated that he actually found his lost city of gold but that it was still inhabited and he was never allowed to leave. The diaries of Percy Fawcett were later published in a highly informative book entitled Exploration Fawcett, later re-released as Lost Cities, Lost Trails. I highly recommend reading these factual accounts of one of the truly great explorers if the book can still be found. To this day, no one has yet fully explored the Mato Grosso region of Peru and it still remains an area shrouded in legend and mystery figure 61. The intriguing story of Colonel Fawcett and his search for the lost cities he was so sure existed is one that could fill many books on its own. It began with a tantalizing tale Fawcett had heard regarding a man named Diego Alvarez. Alvarez had been a Portuguese mariner who had apparently reached South American shores a few years after the discovery of the American continent after being shipwrecked. He had struggled ashore in Peru and then began a life filled with everything you would find in a good adventure story. The tale he tells is one of survival in the savage jungles, captured by cannibals, bold escapes and daring adventures in fabulously rich gold and silver mines fiercely guarded by hostile Indians deep in the thick jungles. Alvarez named the place as the Lost Mines of Mirabelca. Fawcett is reported to have found an old document in Rio de Janeiro, dated 1753. That spoke of Alvarez and tells of how another man, of seemingly unknown origin, whom Fawcett names only as Francisco Raposo, I must identify him by some name had at that time decided to make an attempt to find the rich mines Alvarez had spoken of, only according to Raposo, he had discovered no such mines. Instead after climbing the narrow pass up a difficult mountain he and his men had found, hidden deep in the Amazon, at their feet, about four miles away. A huge city. Ray P. S. Oso said this ancient and now uninhabited city was located in an area known as the Serra do Roncada Snor or Blusters Mountain near the Rio Cingu, in northeast Brazil. Raposo described the city as being very large and showing evidence of once being inhabited by a highly civilized people. He mentioned the city square, many cyclopean ruins, buildings still partially roofed with stone slabs, stone archways, columns, and statues. Many of Raposo's description are quite detailed and also sound strikingly familiar to other Mayan ruins that have since been located that he could have obviously known nothing about in 1753 giving a great deal of credibility to the story and also going a long way reinforced Fawcett's tale of his still yet to be rediscovered lost city. The city Fawcett referred to only as Z. Sometime later a Fawcett himself also came to own the most unusual stone idol bearing some curious inscriptions in an unknown language that have still yet to be translated. He said the idol generated an electric current that traveled up the arm of the person who was holding it. He eventually came to believe that this idol was connected to the lost cities he sought, cities he also firmly believed somehow have a connection to the legendary land of Atlantis. He describes the idol in his book. I have in my possession an image about 10 inches high, 
carved from a piece of black basalt. It represents a figure with a plaque on its chest inscribed with a number of characters, and about its ankle a band similarly inscribed. It was given to me by Sir H. Ryder Haggard, who obtained it from Brazil and I firmly believe that it came from one of these lost cities. There is a peculiar property in this stone image to be felt by all who hold it their hands. It is though an electric current were flowing up one's arm, and so strong is it that some people have been forced to lay it down. Why this should be I don't know. Experts at the British Museum were unable to tell me anything about the idol's origin. The black basalt image faucet spoke of is still the source of wonder and debate figure 62. As of yet both the writing that appears on the plaque the character is holding and the writing on the ankle bands has not been deciphered figure 63. I would be more than happy to hear from anyone who may be familiar with this language or has found anything similar in another location.